picking up a microphone or being a teacher or an organizer, whatever it is that you do, you should have your people and your family and you know the world's best interest at heart. That's that's how my mother and my grandmother raised me. Guinea Bissau was like a life changing experience for me, especially in the sense that you know we were Guinea Bissau is one of the three poorest countries in the world, and you know one of the things that we were doing out there was teaching. We we worked at an orphanage, one of the SOS schools, working with kids on creative writing and the things that these children wrote would blow your mind because we we had like a whole curriculum to connect them with students from the Albiso Campo School in Harlem and, and the Charter School in Queens through the uh, For the Love of Words project and we asked kids qu like questions like what do you think you would do differently if you were the president of Guinea-Bissau you know and these kids knew we're talking about like they were about like fifth sixth graders and they're talking about I would stop narco trafficking in my country. I would use the resources of my country to actually take care of the people instead of just make the people in power richer. Like people overlook children all the time. That's people were so welcoming and inviting us into their homes. We live in a country full of excess in America where everybody has way more than we need. And at the same time, nobody wants to share. You know, like people throw out food every day before they'll share it with somebody on their own block that's starving but over there people don't have much but they're willing to share every last bit of it with you you know when it just puts life into perspective of the things that really matter and the things that don't you know material objects and things like that it's nice to have i'm not going to say you know don't strive for nice things in the world but don't put that over another human being well we are we already built we already built the freshwater well school and the medical facility. We're working on putting uh, solar panels on the on the medical facility now. Um, it was the school wasn't specifically for music. The school is for everybody. You know, it's it's really ill. Like, um, especially the well more than anything, because you know, we take things like that for granted here. I know in California right now, though, there is a shortage of water, and you know, people are putting that into perspective. But you know, over there, people had to walk an hour and a half from the from the village of the Jati to go get fresh water. So it's an hour and a half to get it, hour and a half to come back. You know, so now now that the well is there, more people are moving into the area and, and it's, it's flourishing a little bit, you know? Not truly recognizing and believing in myself. I think that's most of our problem. You know, most people don't look in the mirror and see God looking back at them the way they should. You know, Allah, Yahweh, God, Jehovah, whatever it is you believe in, even if all you believe in science, you know, it's it's not a um, it's not a coincidence that we're here. You know, everything is for a reason. And if the Most High put breath in our lungs, then that means we could do whatever it is we put our minds to. You know what I'm saying? But I think we're always told that because of where we come from, or the color of our skin, or whatever it is, that we're less. So we can't accomplish things. We can't get out of the situation that we're in. And some of us have had terrible things happen to us in our childhood that it's tough to get over, you know what I'm saying? Like, so we doubt ourselves. And it's, and it's just about getting over all of that and moving forward, you know? Well, all of my, the, my albums, they follow, you know, Allah's mathematics, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. This one is the understanding. It's like everything that I've been through puts it all into perspective. You know, all the pain, all the trials, the tribulation, even the joy and the good times. It all means something in the end, you know, and, and they try to divide us. They try to keep us. You're either black or you're white. You're either Christian or you're Muslim. You're either gay or you're straight. You're either this or you're that. And they always make every man or you woman. And they always pit each one against each other and try to make everybody fight. But at the end of the day, the gray area is what connects us all. End of the day, no matter what your religion is, what your gender is, who you worship as your deity or how you identify yourself as a human being, you want to you wanna live a good life. You want to take care of your family. You know what I'm saying? You, that's, that's what the core that boils down to all people. And that's what the album is about. It's, it's, you know, they try to make life in black and white, but life ain't nothing but gray area. You know what I'm saying? Jersey is, I, I mean, for me, it's like everything, you know. The, the the three places I grew up are so different too, you know what I'm saying? Like um, I grew up between Teaneck, Jersey City, and Camden. Teaneck is a suburb, 
that pretends to be diverse but is very split along racial lines. Growing up, there was a murder of a young man named Philip Pinnell who was a cousin of a friend of mine by a white police officer. Riots in the town and all this craziness comes to the light that they've been steering black people to live in one part of the town and they were, the high school was charged with institutional racism. Jersey City is like, you know, people come to New York, but Ellis Island is part of, part of Jersey. Jersey City pay that light bill. You know what I'm saying? So everybody in the world come to Jersey City. There's people from everywhere in Jersey City. You meet any kind of possible mix of human beings you possibly can in Jersey City. The diversity is amazing. You know, so you could eat any kind of food, you could talk in any, hear any kind of language, any kind of music. That was super influential. And then Camden is pretty much like 90, when I was a kid, it was like 95% probably black and Latino, um, primarily Puerto Rican. You know, and extremely poor, high, high murder rate, lots of violence. It's still like one of the most violent cities in the country. And just seeing all that, but at the same time, my, my grandmother, she was like a block mother. Like everybody on the block that needed something from the fiends to whoever, they would come talk to my grandmother. And my grandmother would always tell me like, no matter where it is we come from or what our condition is, we can always make better and, and grow out of it. And my grandmother, she was a teacher in the Philly school system for 30 years, and she lived in Camden her entire life. And it was always just about making our community better. She never wanted to leave. She always just wanted to make it better, you know, because it was ours, and, and we had been there so long, you know. If I had to break it down, I mean, one of, one of my, favorite, my favorite highlights is um, Ralph McDaniels. I, I grew up watching video music box as a kid, and Ralph McDaniels requested to have me on... Uh, one of his programs and afterwards he told me he was like yo you're like the Curtis Mayfield of hip-hop from the music you make and coming from him I just have so much respect for him that was ill you know I got to rock on the radio with, with Africa Bambada spinning records and I'm just freestyling and then just you know right right now the moment that I'm actually in being able to be on the road with Immortal Technique and Talib Kweli is it's amazing you know what I'm saying like Chino XL on stage right now being from Jersey that's that's crazy, you know? So it's, it's just like being able to keep making making new memories or whatever, you know, like one day I'ma bore the shit out of my grandkids with hip hop stories. That shit is gonna be crazy. The more, you know, like at, at one point, I guess when you don't travel much, like most people in the world don't realize Americans don't go places. When you wanna travel as an American, you wanna go to the beach, you could go to, Cali, you could go to Florida. You don't have to travel to another country. You won't go skiing, you go to Vermont, you go to Colorado. Like people really don't have to ever leave this country. So the perspectives that people have on this country on and on other countries is extremely limited. You know, so just being able to go other places and instead of that shit just being a place on the map that I heard about before, I could actually say, I know what's going on there right now. I know what people are thinking there right now. I know what the political climate is. I know what it's like in the streets there. And it, it just broadens your perspective on life. Thank you very much, man.